Yeah, so in the next two videos, I want to give you a brief calculus refresher if you need it. So that's optional. You don't have to watch the next two videos. If you are very familiar with calculus, it will be, I think, too trivial for you. But if you don't, um, if you... Yeah, so in the next two videos, I want to give you a brief calculus refresher. Uh, talking about derivatives and gradients and like I said these videos are optional so if you are very familiar with calculus then I think this might be too easy for you but for those who are yeah you want to refresh their calculus this is like a brief summary of the main parts that we will need for the gradient descent algorithm yeah, so here is an overview of what a derivative is. So a derivative of a function, you can think of it as the rate of change of that function or the so-called slope. So you have a very simple example, a function f, uh, which is equal to 2x. So if we have an input, let's pick an arbitrary number here on the x-axis. So if I have the number 3 here, so the input is 3, then the output would be um, 2 times x or 2 times a in this case, 2 times 3, that would be 6. So the output would be 6. Now let's pick a second point. Uh, let's yeah, move on the x-axis by delta A units. So then we arrive at um, this point here. So if I look at these values, let's move by 4 points and we arrive by at 7 here. And then the output corresponding to that would be 2 times that, which would be 14. So yeah, there is between these two points, there is a change here going on. The change is from 6 to 14. So this is by 8 units. And the change on the x-axis is from 3 to 7. It's only 4 units. So we can then compute the rate of change or the slope by having this 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2. So the slope of this function of 2x is 2. So or more formally, um, here's the equation how we can compute the slope. So we pick the function on the right-hand side. So this is the input on the right-hand side here. And then this is the input here on the left-hand side. And let me use a different color. And of course, then the output here, this is corresponding to this one and the output of this one is corresponding to this one. So we are plugging in the difference of the height. So the 14, we write this down, uh, let's do it in black, 14 minus 6, and then divided by, then we have a, and then this um, second value, delta a minus b, which would be in our case 3 plus 4, minus 3. So, uh, how can I, yeah. Sim so actually I can simplify that. So we have a, and then we have this second value, delta a minus a. So uh, maybe it's simpler to see it like this. So these two belong together. It's a and f of a. And these two, or well, these belong together because it's for this point here, a plus delta a which we plug in here. But we can actually simplify that, right? Because we have a minus a, so we can actually cancel that. And then we have this simpler form here, which is essentially then um, 14 minus 6 divided by 4, which is 8 divided by 4. So this is like more the formal way of how we compute the slope. And in this case, the slope of this function is 2. It tells us by if we change the function by one unit, so the input of the function, if you change it by one unit, the output changes by two units because yeah, the slope is two. So it gives us an idea of how fast the function grows here with respect to the inputs. Yeah, so on the previous slide, I showed you a very, very big leap on the x-axis. Usually when we think of function derivatives, we think of a very small change in the input. So we think about what, uh, what happens if delta x, so the change on the input scale, goes to zero. It's like uh, infinitely small. So here on the right-hand side, this is again the slope from the previous slide, where I just used the letter x now instead of a. Um, and here, th these are two different ways of yeah, denoting that we are computing a derivative. So um, if we have a function f of x, then 
f prime of x would be the derivative of that function. So when I recall from my calculus classes a long time ago, I think this was called um, Lagrange notation, whereas this one um, is the Leibniz notation. You don't have to memorize these names, but yeah, they're, they're just two different ways of denoting the same thing. Um, the Leibniz notation will be a little bit more useful later in the context of deep learning when we call, uh, talk about um, yeah, partial derivatives of functions um, and also yeah, gradients. In any case, um, let's take a look at an example deriving a function or computing the derivative more formally. So let's consider again our function uh, 2x here. So we are now um, yeah, starting with a simple, yeah, just a formal notation from above. Now let's plug in. Let's plug in this function. So uh, if we have x and delta x, the output would be, uh, what would be the output? Um, should be 2x, so 2 times x plus delta x, right? So this one. And uh, yeah, here I see I just expanded it already. So I'm just expanding this to um, 2x plus 2 delta x. So that's what I have here. And then this one is yeah 2x right so that's where this one comes from so what i've done here is really just plugging in the the function into the equation here now i can see i have a 2x here and a 2x here and then i mean this is minus 2x actually so i can cancel those so this one and this one cancels so what i have is 2 delta x divided by delta x so this can also be cancelled and then what remains is the 2 and that is how we derive or compute the derivative of this function. Yeah, let's do this again using a slightly more complicated function. Let's take a look at x squared. So how can we derive x squared? Uh, using the same concept as before, so exactly the same notation, now plugging in x squared instead of 2x. Um, so what we get here is for the first part is for um, f of x plus delta x. This is if we consider x squared. This would be then x plus delta x squared. Then if I expand this, this would be 2x, um, sorry, actually x squared plus 2x delta x plus um, delta x squared. So this is what I've written down here. Um, so if I have now this form, I can simplify because yeah, if we pay attention, there is again x um, squared minus x squared, so we can cancel those. So what remains is 2x delta x plus delta x squared. So now what we do is, um, yeah, looking at this, we can also further simplify it, right? So we can divide actually by delta x. So if I divide by delta x, this one goes away, uh, this one goes away, and this one goes away. So what um, what stays is 2x plus delta x. And also considering that we are interested in a very small change of uh, x, so when delta x goes to 0, so you can think of it as 0, so this kind of also goes away. So the derivative is basically 2x. So deriving x squared, the derivative would be 2x. Yeah, so conceptually what we were doing in the previous slide when we computed the derivative of x squared is we approximated the slope by a secant between two points. So just to draw out what that, uh, yeah, how that looks like. So if we consider this function f of x, x squared, so we have this yeah, parabola here. Um, so now let's consider a concrete Point here. Let's consider this one here, and the slope of this of the function at this point would be this tangent line here, this red line. Um, how we approximate it is it is is be, by taking um, two points. So we took the original point, and then we added delta x to it, right? Plus delta x, so x plus delta x. So we added delta x to x. Let's say this is delta x, so we are here on the right-hand side. 
Now we have the second point, so this is f of x plus delta x, and then there is this secant line, the line um, yeah, between these two points. And we use that line to approximate the tangent. And you can see if, yeah, the difference is uh, relatively large between the two points, right? Between, um, if basically, if delta x is very large, then you can see this is not a very good approximation. This is why we usually take a look at um, when uh, delta x goes to zero at the limit. So in this case, what we would have is we would maybe have a smaller distance here. It's still big, but otherwise I wouldn't be able to draw it. And you can see if I now connect this point and this point, this is a better approximation of the red line. And if I go and make this smaller and smaller, the better I will yeah, um, approximate this tangent line here. So this is basically conceptually how um, yeah, this uh, um, symbolic derivative computation works when we consider this small uh, rate of change here. Yeah, here I made a cheat sheet for you with the most common derivatives, the most useful ones to memorize. I don't want to go over all over all of these, um, but yeah, they are in the slides for your convenience. So if you need that as a cheat sheet, that's in the slides then. Um, oh yeah, here are more derivative rules. So the main ones, the sum rule, the difference rule, product rule, quotient rule, reciprocal rule. These are actually, you don't have to memorize these, you can actually derive them from the product rule. For example, if you um, consider the quotient rule, you can actually uh, rewrite that as um, f of x times g x minus 1, and then yeah, work with this one. So you don't need to memorize the quotient and reciprocal rule, you can actually uh, work with the product rule. Um, yeah, so then the chain rule, that is actually the most important one So for deep learning. I mean, all of them are important, but the chain rule is the main one that kind of drives deep learning. So you will see later when we talk about gradient descent, it is essentially just an application of the chain rule when we compute the derivative of the loss function with respect to the weights. Yeah, so here is a visual explanation of this decomposition of a nested function using the chain rule. So uh, using colors here, it's maybe easier to see. So let's assume we have a function, capital F of x, that consists of two nested functions, um, f and g here. So how we compute this is we first compute the inner part, and then we compute the outer part. So this is just the regular function. So this is visualized here in this graph. So we have a computation graph here. So this is more like a computation graph view where we first pass x into g. Then we get some output. And this output of the inner part then goes into the outer part f. And then this gives us the result z. So when we then compute the derivative of this function, we yeah, we use the chain rule, and the chain rule is uh, yeah, two things. Well, it's uh, two parts: the outer derivative times the inner derivative. So uh, we can think of it as the outer derivative, and here the inner derivative that we compute here. And visually, also what happens is, um, yeah, we can do this uh, separately. So we can compute here, in this case, the inner derivative. So we pass x to g and compute the derivative of that. And here, that's the outer derivative. So here we are deriving f. And then once we have these two results, we can multiply them together. And that is the derivative of the whole function. Yeah, one of the nice things of PyTorch is that it will build such computation graphs automatically if we define variables and do some computation with those. So PyTorch will literally keep a computation graph in the background then. And there are utilities then for computing derivatives automatically. So PyTorch can compute these derivatives automatically with, uh, using a package inside call, uh, which is called autograd, so automatic gradient uh, computation. We will see that in the next week. So usually it's <laughs> not required that we derive things by hand when we work in PyTorch. There are automatic ways of doing that. But of course it's useful to know how 
yeah derivatives and uh, gradients work because uh, we have to have I, I think it's a good idea to have an understanding of how these types of things work before you use packages that can do them automatically uh, yeah and here i just wanted to show you uh, in text when we write down derivatives we will mostly be using the leibniz notation so instead of writing this nested thing here we will use the leibniz notation which i find personally a little bit easier to read especially when we have more complicated function with a lot of nesting going on yeah so here's just an example applying the chain rule in practice on a nested function so here we have the nested function log of square root of x so first it's easy just to take them into two parts so the outer derivative times the inner derivative here so um, and then we can derive them separately so now let's just focus on the outer one first so the derivative of the outer function is uh, the derivative of uh, log g is 1 over g and g it's just a placeholder for square root of x so the derivative of the outer function here is 1 over square root of x and then for the inner one so we have the derivative of square root of x i'm just rewriting it here for convenience and then we can use the power rule here um bring the one half up front and then a minus one uh, in the exponent so it's minus one half and that is just uh, rewritten as one over two square root x so this is the inner derivative and then we just combine them because the chain rule is really just uh, sorry the inner times the outer so here i'm just putting these two parts together so the overall derivative is one over two x here yeah, we can also use the chain rule for arbitrarily long function compositions. So consider this function f of x here, which consists of five nested functions. One, two, three, four, five. Um, so yeah, we can then also expand this using the chain rule when we compute the derivative. So if we compute the derivative of the function of uh, of the outer function f here, if we also the derivative of the whole thing here, we can decompose that into smaller parts and then compute all of them separately using the chain rule and multiply them to compute the derivative basically.